Summary of Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shetterly In 1943, in the middle of World War II, the Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory in Hampton, Virginia, wants to hire hundreds of junior physicists and mathematicians to help the war effort by helping engineers do aeronautical research as part of the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, the NACA. At the time, almost all scientists, who are also known as computers, were women. Also, Jim Crow rules are still in place in the South, so Hampton is still a place where people of different races live in separate areas. Langley hires some black women to work as computer programmers, but they have to work in a separate area called West Area. In the summer of 1942, math teacher Dorothy Vaughn works in a military laundry room to make extra money and help the United States win the war. Dorothy is married and has kids. She comes from a middle-class black family that other black families in town know and admire. One day, she sees a job posting at the NACA. She applies to be a mathematician, and she gets the job. She takes the job even though it means moving far away from her family and being away from them for a long time. Catherine Coleman is a math major at West Virginia around the same time. She is so good at math that she has been asked to join a nearby university, where she has been accepted into a math master's program. She finishes the master's program summer course, but then she quits to start a family. Dorothy Vaughn starts working at the NACA at the same time. As a black machine, she has to work in the West Area computing room, which is only for black people. Whitehead computers Marge Ray Hanna and Blanche Shopson run white computers from a different office called East Area on the east side of Langley's campus. The black computers are also forced to sit together in the restaurant at a table with a sign that says colored computers. This makes them very unhappy. Still, the black computers are a big part of how the engineers at Langley can improve American fighter planes and make bombs that can do more damage. Dorothy worries that the NACA will fire her after the war, but in 1946, she is given a stable job there. Still, it's hard for her to move up the ranks because there aren't many chances for women and even fewer for black women. But when the head computer, Marjorie Hanna, gets a promotion and her second in charge, Blanche, gets sick and dies suddenly, Dorothy is asked to take over. She is only the acting head of the West Area Computer Section for a few years, but she does such a good job that she is made the full head of the unit in 1951. In the same year, Mary Jackson gets a job as a computer at West Computing, where she works for Dorothy Vaughn. The Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union gets worse around the world. But at the same time that the U.S. is trying to stop communist abuse from spreading around the world, many black Americans, including many at the NACA, wonder why the U.S. continues to mistreat African Americans on its own land. But the NACA may offer more chances than a lot of other places in society. Kazimir Zarnecki, a NACA engineer, asks Mary Jackson to join the study team he works on. He then tries to get Mary to become an engineer because of how smart she is. The NACA starts to work together slowly but surely. That doesn't mean that the group doesn't have prejudice against women and black people. It is a place where the top officer, John Becker, doesn't think twice about saying that Mary made a mistake in her math. But she can also use her skills to show him that he was wrong. Her readiness to stand up for herself gives other black computers hope and shows people in charge that Mary has what it takes to succeed. Catherine starts working at Langley in 1953. She heard about the job at a wedding, where a family member told her about it. She joins the Flight Research Division, where her knowledge of mathematical geometry impresses the engineers. Once again, the NACA shows that bias is still alive and well, but it also seems to be a place where it can be defeated. When she meets a white guy at the desk next to hers on her first day at her new job, he gets up and walks away. She doesn't care about how rude he is because she knows that if she wants to stay alive at Langley, she has to be strong. Two weeks later, when they both find out they are from West Virginia, she and the white man become fast friends. In the same way, Catherine's math skills can get her moved from the computer pool to a group run by Henry Pearson, who is in charge of the Flight Research Division. But even though it seems like Pearson is giving Catherine a promotion, he does not give her a raise. 
Integration has already happened, but Dorothy Vaughn is still fighting for Catherine to get the raise she deserves because of it. Catherine is good at her new job right away. Her first job is to figure out why a small propeller plane recently crashed. Her study shows how turbulence from one plane can affect the flight of another, which leads to changes in the rules about how planes should fly. Catherine's skills make sure that her white peers accept her, and as she becomes more accepted, she starts to avoid the signs that say colored in the bathrooms at Langley. At the same time, the world is changing quickly, both in terms of technology and social norms. Electronic computers become more powerful, and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, buys its first one. In 1957, the Soviet Union sends Sputnik, the first satellite into space. In the meantime, civil rights protests lead to lawsuits, which lead to Brown v. Board of Education, the famous 1954, Supreme Court ruling that bans segregation in all public schools in the United States. Despite the decision, though, many states, including Virginia, fight hard against joining together. All of these events have different effects on the black computers at Langley. For example, Mary Jackson has to fight against people who are against unity if she wants to keep learning and become an engineer. At the same time, Dorothy begins to understand that electronic computers are likely to take over her job as a computer. The launch of Sputnik also starts a race between the United States and the Soviet Union to be the first to land on the moon. In particular, the United States steps up its work on Project Mercury, which is a plan to build aircraft that can send a person into space. The NACA also gets a new name, it is now called NASA. These efforts offer a chance, and Catherine is excited by the task. She does a lot of study to help the NACA build a spacecraft that works. She is also not allowed to attend the editorial meetings where study reports are discussed before they are released. She keeps trying to be a part of things, though. She gets to go to these meetings in the end, and she is also the first woman to write a study report for the newly formed Space Task Group. NASA is also becoming more integrated, but the areas around Langley are still fighting against integration. This is a strange and stressful situation for the black workers and their families who work at NASA. As time goes on, Mary Jackson helps her son win the local soapbox derby race, making him the first African-American child to do so. Mary knows that any of her daughters wouldn't have been able to compete because of their gender, but she's glad that at least the race barrier has been broken. Dorothy Vaughn, on the other hand, learns the programming language Fortran so she can program the computers that will replace her and keep her job. Project Mercury is moving forward, and its launch is set for 1961. In the same year, President John F. Kennedy signs an order that says affirmative action policies must be used in the workplace. Even so, Russia is still ahead of the US in the space race, and Yuri Gagarin was the first pilot to go into space. In 1962, John Glenn did the same thing for the United States, and Catherine checked the electronic computer's figures for Glenn's trip. At the same time, President John F. Kennedy set the goal for the United States to land the first man on the moon. Katherine Johnson and the other members of the Space Task Group work hard to figure out how to send a man to the moon. Some black activists protest the project because they are upset that poor African Americans have been ignored while government money has been spent on space travel. Katherine understands these concerns, but she is still committed to her scientific goal. Catherine and hundreds of other black women watch Apollo 11 safely land on the moon in 1969. This is in part because of Catherine's math and efforts. Catherine thinks about all the people who helped her get to where she is now. She hopes to one day figure out the flying path that will take people to Mars. About the author. Margot Lee Shetterly grew up in Hampton, Virginia, in a black neighborhood. Her father worked at NASA Langley Research Center as a climate scientist, and her mother taught English at Hampton University. She went to the University of Virginia to study business. After that, she came to New York and worked at a number of well-known investment banking companies and media startups. After marrying writer Aaron Shatterly, she and her husband moved to Mexico in 2005 to start a magazine for Anglophone expats in Mexico. 
Shetterly started writing and studying hidden figures while living in Mexico in 2010. Shetterly has gotten grants from the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation and the Virginia Foundation for the Humanities to help her with her work. In 2016, Hidden Figures came out as both a book and a movie that was nominated for an Oscar. Shetterly also started the Human Computer Project, which is a list of all the women who worked on studies at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.